Daniel, thank you so much. I have seen the first two episodes and I am signing up for Tubi to see the rest. Um, it, 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 we'll talk about all of this, but it brought so much to mind. Let's start at the beginning. Why did you want to tell this story? And uh, you did, some of this is based on experience you had yourself, correct? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, so many, many years ago, uh, in early development, it was an article that someone showed to me, and I just found it really, really interesting, this idea of um, these five young Black kids from inner city London that got scholarships to this elite private school, and it, ju it just really resonated with me. I had a similar experience coming from South London and going to a university that was predominantly white, predominantly middle class, very elite. Um, and it was a world away from anything I knew. And so it just really resonated with me and all the things that they were talking about. And I thought it just seemed like a great, it was the, a great fish out of water story that I had a personal experience in. And so I knew that it would work. I just knew it would work on screen. Right. So how did you know you had a team of writers? You didn't write by yourself, correct? How did you decide to infuse these painful realities that these kids are going through, like systemic racism, um, of which here in the U.S. Oh, we are talking quite a bit about correctly? Um, how did you decide to infuse that with comedy? Several reasons. I think one, uh, just because I think Comedy is the best way to 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 hold a mirror up to society. I think when you really break down systemic and institutional racism and just racism in general, it's it's actually ridiculous. It's it's so ridiculous and it's almost laughable. And so when you sometimes hold a mirror up to that, I think it's uh, using comedy is just to show people how ridiculous it is is really lovely. And then also as well, just you know, being someone of color. In the world, I think we come up against challenges all the time, every day. And I think a survival technique is just to, <laughs> to laugh it off. Um, and I think that's what I wanted to kind of infuse into the show as well. But I also wanted to make sure that everyone could kind of see it. And I wanted to make sure that even though it was a very personal experience to me, I wanted to give it mass appeal and make sure that people that it was a fish out of war story for everyone. So even though it's through the lens of race, everyone knows what it's like to be a fish out of water. Absolutely. So tell us about code switching and how it's um, used. It It's used in, in the show and Borders, but also in real life. Could you explain a little bit about that? I think that's pretty fascinating. It's odd. It's something that I've always lived with my entire life. I think when you step into these institutions and these buildings, whether it, you know, this is, in the in education, but it's the same with the justice system or even healthcare, or you know, you you do have to switch in a certain way because all these institutions and companies all look the same, top heavy, looking exactly the same. And so, in order to enter these spaces, occasionally you do have to code switch, um, and then the 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 pressures on you in terms of how much that weighs on your shoulders. Are you happy to code switch? Can you code switch? Are you happy to code switch? What are the consequences of code switching? And I think I tried to, my best to put all of those different experiences across these five characters and how they all kind of deal with it in different ways. I just thought of something, maybe we should define code switching for those who haven't heard the term. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, code switching is um, if you are, you know, in Britain, if you are, you know, working class, someone of colour, if you are a woman, it, 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 it's, it's gender, sex, sexuality, race. When you're stepping into um, these spaces, which tends to be very male heavy, very white heavy, uh, very middle class heavy, sometimes you have to almost change a little bit in order to have a level playing field and, and for them to kind of relate with you. So that I would say that that's code switching to me. Absolutely. You meant the characters. A word about the cast. They are amazing. Um, tell us about the casting process and what they brought to your vision of the show. Ah, I mean, yeah, every single one of them. It's, it's been incredible 
all the reviews have just basically just said that that every single one of them are going to be like future megastars. And it is kind of true. I mean, when, you know, when we were putting together the casting group, we were very, we were very, um, it, it, it was a difficult process because what I really wanted is that I wanted people who could perform, but I also wanted an authenticity. I wanted you to really believe that these kids were from South London and, and that dictated how we did a lot of the casting as well. So we had a great casting director, Rosalie Clayton. And so she did the conventional ways of finding actors, but then she also just did um, street casting as well. And that's how we found Seku who plays Toby, who is so natural and so real, but naturally funny and then gives a great performance. And that was so important to the show. And we also made sure that we got them to do chemistry reads and stuff like that. And my casting director did a really lovely thing whilst they were, whilst they were doing the reads together, she just left the camera rolling in between takes just so we could see how they were interacting with one another off screen as well, which is so important. And that was really beautiful to see. So I think when you come to the show and you watch it, you can really feel that chemistry between them. Now you have a, a part in the show too. Why, why did you decide uh, to put yourself in it? <laughs> I mean, everything I do, I always try to squeeze myself in. Funnily enough, this was this was the first show which I wasn't actually going to put myself in, but everyone assumed that I was going to play that role. And I don't know, I think in my head, I still think of myself as like a child and I can play one of the teenagers. Um, but yeah, it, it was a great role to play. Like um, I had... I had lots of thoughts and ideas for Gus. And so when people thought I would be a good person to play, it was it was really exciting. And it's not you it's not the usual kind of roles I play as well. I tend to play much more co comedy characters. And this this one, this character was much more real and much more grounded. Uh, and he was really the support network for those kids. Uh, and so I yeah, I just love playing that role. And I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad that I, I took it. And again, for someone who hasn't seen this yet, your role is you. So, so I play Gus, who is the mentor. So he arranges with the school to bring these five kids into this school. And so he there's there's something a little bit tricky hanging over him because he knows in himself what these institutions can be like. And he also knows that it can be it's going to be quite difficult for them to fit in. But at the same time, he's also aware the opportunities that can give and taking them from the world of South London where a lot of people don't quite make it or end up in, with bad crowds. This is a great opportunity to kind of push through that. So he's got a difficult decision to kind of bring him in there and then also kind of help them kind of settle in. Right, right. So uh, while Borders de depicts a reality that not everyone experiences, to what do you attribute the success it's enjoyed so far and the overwhelmingly positive reaction? You know, when I was in the writer's room, there was something that was really important to me and something that I kept on saying to everyone in that, even though we're telling this through the lens of race and class and privilege, I want it to have a mass appeal and I want to make sure that everyone has experienced that sense of otherness and great shows like Sex Education does it so well is that everyone remembers what it's like to be a teenager and being awkward and falling in love and do you know what I mean and so we can tell it through these certain characters but we can all experience and that and that was really important for me when I was in my writer's room that was my go-to all the time and I think I also had an incredible director as well um, Itosha Hilton, who was really great at like capturing that sense of isolation, otherness, and feeling out of space. So even if you've experienced it or not, you will still connect with those characters and and really connect with them feeling out of place, which I think we all have. We can all relate to it, absolutely. Um, what conversations do you hope the show will start? And may I share a reaction of my own? Please, um, yeah. So I'm older than you, and I went to um, high school, American high school, in a suburb of Chicago in the 70s that was um, one of the most integrated at the time. And my high school was 40% Black which was okay. very, very, very unusual. Yeah. And so at the time, um, 
watching the show has brought back so many memories of, I mean, I was very shy and definitely the type of person who, you know, wanted to fly under the radar, but remembering instances. And I actually, after watching the first two episodes, I was going through my yearbook just to remember it brought back so much. Did I behave in the right way in that moment? Did others behave in the right moment? How much did they not tell us about what was going on at the time? And as as we see now, my generation, which was still in the middle of the Cold War and the US was supposed to be better than everybody else, they didn't tell us so many things about systemic race. Anyway, this is all the stuff that your comedy has elicited. <laughs> Holy cow. So what conversations do you how I understand my situation is unique and I'm older than most people who are watching the show but what kind of conversations do you hope the show will start well, well it's funny that you say that I think what, what's been amazing about the response is that you know some people kind of come to it thinking that they're just going to get a teen show but it's for everyone because it, it it does tap into something that we are all all aware of in society and I think it's just a really great lens to kind of show my experience. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's it's very difficult to speak about what it's like being someone of color in certain institutions. So being able to capture it and put it on screen and to have so many players, so you can see it for yourself. And and in the show itself, I'm, I try my best not to be too judgy. You know, there's a few characters, there's a few bad players, <laughs> but as a general rule, I try not to be too judgy. And, and I, I, what I want to show is a lot of the times with these situations is that it's not the individuals, it's the institution itself and it's how the institution is being set up. And if an institution benefits certain people, you're not going to change it because why would you change something that benefits me? And it's not that you're actively discriminating against someone, it's just that your inactivity sometimes is what discriminates against someone else. And I just want people to kind of go away and kind of look, look at how, how systemic and structural and institutional ra racism um, plays its role in society. And, and yeah, and just to see it and whatever questions you lead with, it's completely up to you. I, I, I've, I've not set any, I've not set anyone homework. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> um, it's up to you what you want to take away from it. So um, the first season is six episodes. What can you tell us? Is, is Are there indications that the story will continue? I, I imagine you have many more stories to tell. Will we have the opportunity to see them? Yeah, well, I hope so. I mean, so me and my team have already started like working away on like potential new series storylines and stuff like that. Um, so, but yeah, there's so much. I think when you watch the series, you'll see that we only really touched the surface because there's so many characters. And I think what we do really well in Borders is that it's not just about our main five, but we kind of look at everyone in that school. And so even when we're sitting there storylining stuff, we're able to like delve into other characters and delve even deeper into our five main characters, which again, we, we've only skimmed the surface. So yeah, there's a lot more to... Um, to unpick. Daniel, thank you for your time and thank you for the series. It is not often, I mean, we 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 have choice overload these days in terms of television, but it's not often to be able to laugh and think at the same time. So <laughs> thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs>